another hot tip. Unless you are feeling very fit, mm. drive your full drive. Take it easy. There's huge potholes, but drive to the mine. Yeah, they say it's 7K. I'm not quite sure if it is or if it might be a little bit longer. We saw a couple walking. They didn't look very happy. No. I think It's a long way. I think that marriage is done. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I would feel after oh. that. What do you tell me it was 7K? You know, yeah. you'd be like that. You'd it's be pretty rocky. Crazily mad. Yeah.
mate. Hey, it's not as cold as it's been. I mean, it's eight degrees, but yeah, it's not. Sort of. <laughs> it's still cold. <laughs> okay, here we are at the Barclay Homestead. This place is pretty impressive. First of all, I have to say that crosswind yesterday, we dropped down to about 80, 85 kilometres an hour. Uh, when we turned right at three ways mm. because we went from having, I think, a tailwind to having this side wind. But once you get used to the feel of it, it actually it handled so well. Yeah. You know, we still had people flying past us oh, gosh, towing yeah. vans. Yeah. So I don't know. I always think, you know, if you, if you, unless you're in a real rush, I don't really see the point, you know. Well, I, I mean, what was interesting is that the vans that all flew past us on the way here, we pulled in and they were literally filling up with fuel. So, yeah, it was a saviour, you know, four or five minutes. Yeah. Anyways, look, you know, we just say drive to the conditions. Yeah. Now, there is signage along the Barclay Highway that we've never seen before that includes pictures of van with the trailer going and it says crosswinds, mm. beware. And we're like, wow, that's a first. And then even further up it says headwind cause higher fuel consumption. consumption. Yeah. Yeah, and really, you know, just make sure you're checking how much fuel you're using and, and you know, and travel with fuel. Yeah, so interesting. It is interesting to see that. So this must be a com common occurrence here to have this sort of wind. Mm. Yeah, we, we haven't certainly seen those sorts mm. of signs anywhere else around the country. Um, I was reading this morning, though, when I was looking up the Barclay Homestead, It's it hasn't had a real good run over the last probably, no, I don't know, it. six to 12 months between major storms and then they had a... a a pretty damaging fire in their kitchen and then, of course, the floods. I reckon that chef's still got his job or is he gone? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and the floods from the start of this year. So they are still in the process of rebuilding and redevelopment, although mm. they've just literally reopened the restaurant, bar, new kitchen and, um, I guess, reception area, which is all beautiful and very well done. It's like a walking into a... A resort kind of complex, you know, like it's beautifully designed. Yeah, yeah they've done it really well. The souvenir well. area, yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, so when I was reading about that, I did read that um, obviously due to the fire, they had to close the petrol station, and so there was a quite a long period there where travellers, you know, coming in between this stretch couldn't get fuel between like, right. three ways and at some Camel point, wheel. yeah, over Queensland. the border. Um, so. Potentially those signs have got something to do with that, but it may just be a notoriously windy place. This place is designed really well as far as powered and off-grid yeah. camping. Uh, you pretty well turn right if you want a powered site. Yeah. It looked packed. There were so many vans there. We were pretty well one of the first here, I think, in the yeah. unpowered yeah. off-grid section, but it also yeah. filled up. So there would have been all total or told probably... 45, 50 vans yeah, here last I night. I reckon. Plus yeah. other campers. It was people. a pretty hip happening vibe over in the uh, restaurant at happy hour. First time for the reopening to have a muso on. Yeah. So we were there for the inaugural acoustic set. Yeah, that was great. And it was great. Happy yeah. hour, 4 till 5. Food kicks off at 5.30. And acoustic set, um, yeah, kicks off, I think, around 5 as well. So, yeah, it was yeah. really great. Yeah, it was a really good night out. Met some... Lovely other really? young travellers from the sunny coast. Other young travellers. Well, <laughs> younger than us. <laughs> Much yes, younger right. than us. Ah, uh, so good. All right. We are on the road to Camu Wheel. Camu Wheel. Oh, that's what I think. In yeah. Queensland. And it is 260 kilometres, so a pretty easy drive day. Yes. Hopefully... We're beating the wind. The wind is on its way back, we're told, but we might get ahead of it. So. All right, let's beat that guy too. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. That guy that in the guy, van yeah, pulling quick. out. Ah, quickly! Do it. All oh, good. All oh, good. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, you happy? <laughs> He's filling it with a oh, few.
Yeah. We have again. crossed the border. Oh, hello, Queensland. Yay. Okay. I feel like we've just left you. <laughs> Got to get my jacket off. Yes. <laughs> I'm already out of mine. Yeah, good job. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll keep going, team. Let's do it. Boom, just like that. Welcome home, Jasper. Kind of. Still got a long way to go. Queensland. Let's see. Well, let's see what they've got to say about quarantine in Queensland. Here you go. Banana benders. Do not bring in any plants, material, or equipment prohibited past this point. Banana, Banana mango, mango, sugar, sugar cane. cane. I'm pretty sure we're all good for that. Welcome to Outback Queensland. Have we got any bananas? No, no, we don't have sugar cane Got or mangroves. Overlanders way. Alright. Boom. I wish we actually... Mount Isa, yeah. 202. Next time we get to go to a store and we're not doing a quarantine check. Yes. Could we buy some mangoes? Oh, yum. Yeah. I don't know if it's mango season, but maybe some frozen mangoes. I love mangoes. <gasps> Okay, Camus Wheel. We are in Queensland. It is two dollars and eleven point nine cents here at the Puma. Puma, however you say it. And we were going to camp here, just down by the river. There's a couple of free camps, but they are closing within the week. So we thought, well, we don't want to really stay there and then promote somewhere where you're not going to be able to camp because they are closing them to see about their cultural significance and if they are going to keep opening this as a free camp to the public so we'll see how that goes we'll watch this space but we've decided that because we left so early this morning we're going to kick on another couple hundred kilometers probably two and a half to three hours drive see how we go to a pretty remarkable free camp it's on a private property that has an old abandoned mine shaft that looks amazing so we might be able to get ourselves there a little bit further down the road and then spend some extra time there tomorrow morning before kicking off again right. jasper's now singing <laughs> crazy kid <laughs> Okay, dump easy right there if you need it. Whew, a little bit windy. Okay, we're right on the edge of Camel Wheel, which basically the township's probably, I don't know, five or six blocks. It's only 500 meters in length, so you could easily drive past this. It is on the east side of town, okay? So if you're coming from our direction where we've just come from the Northern Territory, it's right on the edge of heading out of town, or it's on your right. If you're heading into town there you go uh, there is a couple of water fill points just here it's a little bit windy so i'll stay back here uh look the reviews differ a lot of people say i mean the water's coming out crystal clear okay but don't let that fool you uh some people have said as far back a year a year and a half ago oh look it's it's not potable recent reviews say tasted perfectly fine and is potable so we're going to fill up drinking uh sorry tank one and use it for showers and all of that sort of jazz washing and we'll keep our drinking tank for drinking water that we know is pure and i am going to really start to give a crack now that i've picked up the water filtration so that i can talk about that because everything i've seen looks incredible but i need to test it myself first before we uh we really share it all right let's get back to filling up the tank here we go Okay, guess what? I've got a tool. And this is in relation to back there at Peterborough when we're only into, I think, day three of our trek out to Uluru. And I was filling up the diesel heater with diesel fuel from the jerry can. And I snapped off the nozzle, the yellow nozzle that helps pour it in safely 
and it was a mess. It was diesel literally everywhere, a little bit of cursing from the feel goods, as you can imagine. That didn't make the show, but I was so frustrated. I just really thought I'll be able to get this out, and I just had no luck. So there would be, I don't know, Katie, a dozen. Yep. Uh, ideas and suggestions for different ways to get it out. How do you retrieve this missing nozzle? Uh, some were very creative, yeah. some made us laugh. <laughs> this was the winner, and so I went and actually purchased one, and it is called a Magnetic Spring Claw Pickup Tool. There you go, that's its whole name, it's official. And it's from a company called Tool Pro. This one is quite unique. Uh, there is like seven or eight dollar ones and then uh this one was a little bit more it was like 18 dollars, but i had to go for the more expensive one because it had a wider claw look at that Ooh. it's got a magnetic end there and it's got a light <laughs> that's cool which is what i'm gonna need because it is really quite hard to see in the bottom of the actual tank so here we go the magnetic spring claw pickup tool Let's give it a go. Oh my God, I hope it works. Oh, so do I. <laughs> All right. Come around, Katie. You go in there. Oh, hang on, I better get the light on. I feel like an explorer. The Intrepid Adventure. Can you see it down in there, guys? Oh, I see yellow. Yeah. And it was all yellow. Not off to a good start? No. I might, um... Oh, I turned the light off. I just can't see. Oh, there we go. What? <laughs> You're not helping. Sorry. This is where we cut and we come back, hopefully, with success. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Get that. Look at that. That's, that's what I've got to do. Can you see that now? I realised that the light doesn't work when it's in, so you have to extend the claw, ah. and then you should be right. Oh, I got it. No way. Oh, dropped it. Boom. Mission aborted. Let's try again. Yep, got it. Come and watch this. Oh, dropped it again. <laughs> Yeah, got it. Oh. Have you got it? Have you got it? Oh, I dropped it again. Oh, no way. Yeah, got it. Oh, I dropped it again. Okay, got it. Come here, have a look. Oh, can you see? Oh. Holy crap. 20 minutes later. What's that music they used to play on that Eddie McGuire show? Ding, 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 ding. That's the thinking music. Ding, 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 ding. Kidding. Okay, how I got it is not how I thought I was going to get it. Ba, ba, da, ba. <laughs> Look I at you! That. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that. You ripper. And what is good is that it's still all there and it's still yellow. So I don't think it will affect our diesel fuel or the heater at all. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I don't have the name of the, the gentleman who suggested the spring claw pickup tool, magnetised, and a light. There you go. That is so cool. Yes. Is the light still on? Yeah. Fantastic. We need to find some other problems that we can use that tool for. Yep. Or if you look on eBay under Feel Good, it's going cheap. <laughs> Ten bucks.
Well, this has to be one of the most interesting free camps we've ever stayed at. It is the town of Mary Kathleen. It's located about halfway between Mount Isa and Cloncurry, and it's basically referred to as a ghost town now. It was once one of the prime uranium mines here in Australia and around the world. In fact, uranium was first discovered here in the early 1960s, and within one year, they had basically built an architecturally designed town that looks absolutely incredible in the historical images. Thousands of people lived here and they had everything, you know, a town square, they had an Olympic sized swimming pool, tennis courts. It looked beautiful. And of course, this incredible mine that operated for about 10 years. Once they had finished the contract for the uranium that the mine was actually opened for. Most of the thousands of people that lived here moved away, all bar a about a dozen families, I believe. And they lived here at Mary Kathleen until the mine was reopened again in the early 70s to fulfill another contract. They basically spent the better part of the next 10 years until the mine was exhausted. And then they dismantled the entire area. The mine was shut down in 1983 and they removed all of the buildings, all of the houses were sold on, the town square, they filled in the swimming pool, and basically all that is left now are big concrete slabs, the footprint of what was once this incredible bustling town. It's really eerie and really interesting and really beautiful as well. It's such an amazing landscape and is now on private property, but you can come and free camp, which is just incredible. And there are plenty of other campers in here with us tonight. So a really good choice. I think you can have an open fire. You do have to be obviously fully self-sustainable. There are no facilities here, but there are plenty of cows who we've read me and are through the grounds as well. So I think it'll be a really enjoyable, peaceful night here tonight before we trek on towards Winton tomorrow. Love this campsite. So awesome, so much space, and there are so many vans here with us tonight. All right, got the Starlink up. The boys will be happy. It's that time of day, you're gonna get some dinner on. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Just in the nick of time, hey Paulie. This is the best picture that we have had how good is Starlink? Oh, awesome. We just need the Broncos Especially to be they, just as good. Yeah. Alright, it's only just started, so... Oh, mate, you got Brecky on the road. On the road again. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Yes. It is a good morning. morning. It's a great morning. We are going to one of our favourite destinations, and it is on our leg home now, so... Uh, to stop yeah. in at Winton for a couple of nights to explore is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, you could spend three weeks there, which is what we did last time. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to show you a couple of the real absolute gems and must-sees. And the pub scene is outrageously good, <laughs> which is good. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, but where we stayed last night, called Mary... Kathleen. Kathleen, the uranium town Township. Really? well it's a ghost town now shows you what you can do with a, a bit of mining money doesn't it remarkable story and quiet so peaceful <sighs> just amazing and this morning with the cows and the kangaroos and wallabies was just beautiful yeah i think this would be the perfect place to have a camping 
a bench or something. Oh, There's just uh, so much space. Absolutely. So, yeah, it might be something we do down the track, but either way, it is awesome for that. It's a private property, mm. so you'd need to look into that, but it is just such a unique free camp. It's one of those ones that yeah. you're just blown away by. Yeah, I love it here. Mm. Good tip. Okay, when you drive in, don't just take the first turn, and unless you, you want to be closer to the, the highway, mm. um, although there's not a lot of road traffic overnight, just keep going down. The place is massive, yes. and uh, and you, you'll soon go, oh, wow, there's a van, there's a van, and then, you know, you realise across however many acres, I yeah, mean, it I must know. be massive space. Yes. Uh, there were thousands That's of people living there. here, but uh, there'd be easily, I don't know, 50 Van is here last night. Oh, easy. Well, yep. look, we went for a drive to the mine, and then on the way back, we were like, oh, where's our van? How do we actually <laughs> find it in and amongst all of this space? Another hot tip, unless you are feeling very fit, mm. drive your full drive, take it easy. There's huge potholes, but drive to the mine. Yeah, they say it's 7K. I'm not quite sure if it is or if it might be a little bit longer. We saw a couple walking. They didn't look very happy. No. I think, it's a long way. I think that marriage is done. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I would feel after that. What do you tell me it was seven Ks? You know, yeah. you'd be like that. You'd it's be pretty rocky. Crazily mad. Yeah. All right. We are on our way 412, 16, kilometers. We're 12, gonna try and Yes, we're going to try and do a, a very unique pub stop on the way, although we're leaving pretty early, so fingers crossed they're open, yeah, but it's one of the unique ones. We could stop in for Brecky maybe if they're open. Yeah, if they do, Brecky. Mm. Brecky in a pint. All right, let's do it. You good? Yes, town square like there. Oh, right. oh yeah, town square. Yeah. yeah. There's no more buildings, but you can actually stay in like every single, well, ev the places where the buildings were. Yeah. Yeah. Which all the concrete slabs, the exactly. stairs are still there, the metal is still in the ground. Yeah. But it, nothing. Very nothing unique, else. isn't it? Yeah. And one will stay with us for a while. Mm. All right. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more. Here we go, look at this, I had to turn in really. <laughs> Very cosy. I had to turn in so sharp and where the fuel inlet is makes it a little bit difficult. Anyway, I am stretched. We're under $2. Thank you Queensland, $1.99.9 for diesel here at the BP in Cloncurry. Don't be in a hurry when you come to Cloncurry. That's what the sign says on the way in, but we are, we're going to keep moving. There's a massive IGA here at the BP as well. Uh, but that's pretty well it for us this morning. I think it's Sunday morning. So it is a sleepy old town. I think we're the only people awake. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll keep continuing on to the famous pub, which I'm not going to tell you about just yet, but it looks pretty cool. Great story. Can't wait to get there. We'll hopefully have some bricky and a pint. <laughs> awesome. Sound good to you? Good. Yeah.
Look at this, the Never Never 2 is firing. Jasper Rooney. Ah, okay, great to have a quick stop. We've still got about 250 kilometres to get to Winton, but we stopped at this little place, McKinley's, because they have the famous Walkabout Creek pub, and really its fame came about from Australia's number one all-time grossing film back there in the 80s, Crocodile Dundee. It is known as Mick Dundee's Watering Hole. Uh, some classic scenes from that movie. In fact, we're going to revisit it, I think. I better check the the rating. It might be PG. Um, hopefully it's okay for Jasper, but we might put that as an outdoor movie on the back of the van when we get into Winton. But a really wonderful pub experience to be able to go there and check it out and feel like you actually, you know, well, you are, you're walking into the, the set of Crocodile Dundee and you can get uh, food and drink there. However, although we timed it, we thought, right, we'll roll in at 10 a.m. as it's opening and we'll get some brekkie. They don't do breakfast on a Sunday. Bum, bow. So there you go. There's a tip from us try and time it so that you can actually come here when you can get some food and beverage they are still serving alcohol but uh i just thought you know it might be a bit too early for a pint soon we've got 250 clicks still to go but then just a street back is this really fantastic uh kids playground area it's fenced uh no dogs permitted in this area which is fine undercover area and yeah just a few bits of play equipment for the kids and some good history on the McKinley region. Uh, this is a really great access point if you're heading to Julia Creek, which looks incredible. We've never been to Julia Creek, so that's on our list for later in the year. And um, I'm sure we'll cover that. But right now, Katie's over there getting the brekkie wrap going and maybe a cup of tea. There you go. I was hoping for a, a beer and a burger. <laughs> Not to be. Mick Dundee, you got to open on Sundays, righto. Mmm, got my brekkie wrap, cup of tea. Thank you, wifey. Mm -hmm. How are you going over there, mate? Mm. You're an avocado kid, aren't you? You just love it. Mm -hmm. uh, green is my favourite colour. Green? Green? Ah, I can see the correlation. <laughs> and why don't you eat broccoli? Mm, mm, mm. See, I do. Mum mm. makes me. Mum makes me, yes. Mm. I do like green eggs and ham. I do like them, Sam. I am. Join us for the ultimate off-road caravan and four-wheel drive tour with our good mate Tony from Australian 4x4 Treks. Now this is more than just a tag along across the Gulf with experiences, interactive workshops that make this a complete holiday package and the adventure of a lifetime. We're joining Tony as guests to film this epic road trip adventure for an upcoming TV series and we would love to share this experience with you. Now it's limited to only eight vans, it is 14 days, all all-inclusive adventure with lifelong memories to be made. Tony is a fully accredited Savannah guide and a qualified four-wheel drive instructor, so we know we'll all be in the best hands on this tour. Okay, if you are ready and up for the challenge, great company and a whole lot of fun, pack your van, pack your sense of adventure and get ready for the ultimate off-road tour. To check out the full itinerary and to secure your space, visit 4x4treks.com.au. We look forward to seeing you up there in Catherine in the Northern Territory to get this adventure started. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel 
And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails. Do you want to know something about these, Jasper? Yeah. They are on tonight's menu. No. They are. They are not. Yeah, guinea fowl stir fry. Don't scare them. I'm just trying to grab them. Don't scare them. Do you know what they do? They keep the snakes away. Yeah. I think it's a nakey ripoff, to be honest. I don't think it's a nakey. Yeah, it's a fakey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a nakey. Oh, oh look, no dogs. Uh, we've got a little dog, Scruffy, but he's invisible. Okay, that's okay then. Invisible dogs are allowed, but anyone else who's got a dog that is real, physically able to be seen and touched, not allowed. Well, I can actually touch Scruffy. Can you? Yes. Oh. Okay, it's a bit hard to get on. Oh, because I had a rabbit run with it. Oh, hello there, young man. Are uh, you the owner of this fine establishment? Yes, it is a shop down here. Oh, yeah. Uh, great. Oops. What do you actually... Don't fall out the window. Jeez. Um, uh, what do you sell? So, uh, it's a supply shop and we sell stuff. Like, like supplies? Supply, like um, tools and... I don't know. No food. Stuff. No food, though. No coffee? No. Oh, great, mate. I might as well go back to Walkabout Creek. I'm still in the shadow. I'm in the shadow.